Hey everyone, my name is David Catu and also, knows as, also known as Delta Koch on the internet and on the forum. And on the last video, Jason presented you the Scene Explorer. In today's video, I'm going to present the Inspector. Uh, so let's dive in. Here, are, here is my um, uh, friend, the Flight Helmet, done by our uh, talented artist Patrick. I'm going to call the Inspector right now, here. So. Jason mentioned the Scene Explorer. Let's just pick an object inside this Scene Explorer. So we can, uh, we can see here we have four different tabs. The first one is about property. It is a contextual tab that's going to show you all the properties of the selected object. We're going to have a video about that. So no worries about that right now. Also, another one that I'm going to show quickly is the Tools. The Tools tab is um, a list of tools that's going to help you as well. We're going to have a video. So let's concentrate on the debug here and on the statistic there. So the debug, the debug will give you helpers, for instance. The goal for you for this specific tab is to help you fix a scene or improve it. For instance, you want to have a sense of the size of your scene. Let's bring in the render grid, as you can see on the ground here. If you are running with physics simulation, the physics helper hill will give you more insight and more information about your physics simulation. You can also turn on specific texture channel. So let's turn off, for instance, the diffuse here, and I can see everything but the diffuse, OK? And that's the same for all the texture channels. Then I can also control specific features of the engine. You would want to evaluate the performance of your scene, and maybe the animation is a problem. Let's turn off animation, OK? And you can do that with all the features of the engine. Now, the, the performance tab, a very important one. You have done your scene, and you want to fine tune it or find the culprit who is blocking your performance. This screen will help you. So you're going to target 60 frames per second, solid 60 frames per second, OK? So first, you're going to have some statistic about numbers in your scene. You want to make sure that all these numbers are pretty small, like not too much smashes, not too much indices, etc., etc. OK? Indices, that's the number of uh, points in your scene, and faces, that's a triangle list, OK? So just to be simple, a face is three indices, OK? So here, these numbers are pretty linked. And you want to be pretty cautious about the draw calls. The draw calls is the number of time, the number of time when the CPU will send information to the GPU, OK? And obviously, you want the CPU and the GPU to work together side by side in a parallel way. So every time the CPU has to synchronize with the GPU, that's a draw call, you want to avoid that. So the, this number has to be really low for the, your scene to be fast, OK? Then, frame step, pretty important. Here, my frame, the overall frame, is about almost 2 milliseconds. Good. You have a budget of 16 milliseconds. So we are far low. That's really cool. Here, you can say, OK, which step in my rendering loop is taking time? For instance, is that the mesh selection, the time spent by the camera to evaluate active meshes? Is that render target, like shadows, for instance? Is that the particle, sprite, etc.? You have the list here. And you can decide which one is really important. Two things to take in account. Render is the time spent by the CPU to prepare your scene. As I mentioned before, mesh selection is the time spent to evaluate active meshes. Then there is this interframe information, the time spent by the CPU waiting for the next frame. Good, the CPU is sleeping, meaning that you are running fa faster than him. Excellent. Then you have the time spent by the GPU itself rendering this scene. When the GPU receives all the information from the CPU, it's going to execute shaders and stuff like that. This scene here is pretty complex. It's a physically based rendering shader uh, with a lot of information. And we spend like four milliseconds rendering this scene. Excellent. We, don't, uh, we are pretty optimized here. And then to finish, you have system information. It's more for your uh, information. You can't change anything here. Just one thing to mention, if you were thinking about using WebGL 2 and you are running on WebGL 1, then you, you may have to use uh, fallbacks from Babylon, for instance. Um, just run one uh, head cross here. It's not a big deal. It's a new feature we implemented, which is parallel shader compilation, new feature of 4.0. We don't have it on this specific uh, computer because it requires Chrome Canary so far. So it's going to be there in the future. We are already supporting it. And finally, we are here at the information. I am running on a GTX 1070. That's pretty much for today, guys. Uh, I highly encourage you to um, register and subscribe to our channel. Give us any comment, feedback, what you like, what you dislike. Please follow us. That's it for today. Thank you very much.